Now in 2023, we have seen a huge amount of new products released. That includes driver, but all of them have had one big problem, the price of them. So for me, looking at different brands this year has been really interesting, trying to find value without a compromising quality. And as you can see, I've got my hands on the new Srixent lineup. And this driver under this head cover, I think could tick a whole lot of boxes. So first of all, let's address that price point situation. This driver is priced in UK pounds at 429. That makes it a hundred pound lower than some of its competitors. So what we first need to find out is, are we gonna be making compromises in terms of performance and quality compared to those other brands? And I'll be putting that to the test out here on the golf course. The first thing I wanna take a look at is how it looks. So this is the ZX5 model, and from a shelf appeal perspective, I like it. It's fairly minimal in its design, which I always like. Not a great deal going on. We can see that weight port at the back, which will obviously be assisting in terms of CG placement to help with launch. But then the interesting bit for me is where you turn it to the address position. And now we've got a driver that I really, really like the look of. I was surprised this year when a couple of the manufacturers went back from a matte crown back into gloss. And I think that was a mistake in my opinion because the matte crown, like we've seen in Ping G430 lineup, for example, is far easier on the eye in my opinion. And that sort of glare that you get sometimes in the sun, I don't overly like. But it's not just the fact that it's got the matte finish, there's a couple of bit of uh, silver accents around the heel and toe which just sort of um, shaped the driver, I suppose you'd say, and that shape is really nice. It's traditional, it's not been squashed, it's not been elongated, it's not been made high at the toe end, so it's very much a traditional shape, and at a dress, it sits really nice, and that matte crown mean that so far, We've not made any compromises. In fact, I think it's only positives. Right, one of the things we're gonna look at in today's video is, this is all about on-course testing. I'm gonna be hitting plenty of balls out here on the golf course at the Pool Resort in Mallorca. I've got this thing set at a standard 10.5, which is what, uh, like I said, that's a standard loft of this head. But what you'll notice is that there is a lot of loft and lie adjustments to be made within this head. And that's a real positive, like I always suggest, custom fit is major. And when you can make as many changes as you can in this friction driver head, for me, that can only be a positive. But we'll kick things off. Like I said, standard 10 and a half degree head. Interestingly, I've got a hazardous shaft, 5.5, 60 gram. Right, now my shot, my natural shot, is to aim at that left bunker a little bit of a cut. So let's see how we get on. Come on. Well, that's gone up the bunker and it's not moved from the bunker. <laughs> so that's an interesting one. It's done exactly what I wanted it to in terms of the line that I chose. It didn't move, but it certainly didn't cut. And one thing I'd like to check before I go any further is if this is in fact a draw bias in terms of that head profile and its weighting. Right, so a quick look at what Strixon are saying. I'm not gonna start reeling off about rebound frames and star frame crowns. Forget all that, we'll tell you how this performs and that's the end of it. But there is no reference to an actual draw bias. So I'm gonna hit another ball in exactly the same setting as that and we'll see how we get on and then I'm going to make some adjustments. It does say that that weight at the back is eight grams so it's not a significant weight because I mean if you think like to the ping movable driver in that G430 I think that's about 24 25 grams so it's not a huge weight but it promises to be high forgiving and straight. We'll see let's get ball number two loaded up. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Shervo, the premium Italian golfwear and sportswear brand. By using some of the most innovative fabrics, Shervo produce clothing that is both stylish and incredibly comfortable to wear, both on and off the golf course. For more information, visit the Shervo website, and I will, of course, provide a link in the description of this video. Right, let's get back to the golf. Now again, I mean, at the bunker, it was a slightly better line, but the interesting thing is there for me is that the ball didn't cut, and I am trying to play that shot. So at the moment, 
there's nothing wrong with being straight but two shots fairly straight at where I'm aiming I'm going to load up again and this time we're going to go for the center of the fairway and just see if I can hit a straight shot because uh, I've got no problem with that I mean how good is that a driver that goes straight which is uh, it's unusual in my hands but the first thing I want to say, first of all, irrelevant to where those balls have gone, they've all, in terms of where they finished, line-wise, they've all gone where I was aiming, and they've all flown the ball straight. Third ball considerably higher in terms of its ball flight. The sound, I would say, is maybe a little hard, if I'm being quite honest with you. It's not the softest sound in driving. That's not necessarily what you want. You want soft, but then a bit of zip out the face. I think it's a little bit hard off that face. And again, I keep mentioning a reference to Ping G430 lineup, but it's got similar sort of sound and feel to the much improved Ping G430. So I'm liking it a lot, but I'm going to make a bit of an adjustment because I feel like we can take that loft down a little bit um, and then see what happens in terms of performance. But so far, let's just go back to that initial question that I asked. Are we making compromises when we save £100 in buying a driver? The answer at this point is no, we are not. Right, so what I've done there is I've, I've actually taken it down two degrees. Um, so we're effectively eight and a half degree head, which is... I mean, realistically, all the drivers I generally use are nine degrees, um, but we'll see what happens because that ball flight is really high right now. And it does surprise me a little bit because like I said, that weight of just eight grams is not the heaviest of weight in terms of pulling that CG far back, but the ball is certainly got a lot of concentrated effort on going up right now. And I'd just like to flatten that out a bit and uh, see if we can improve this flight a little bit for me at least. Oh my word, I mean, I am super impressed. I'm super impressed, first of all, that the adjustment in terms of loft has, uh, has done what it's intended to, and we certainly flattened that ball flight out. But maybe more importantly and still, is that we're finding the center of the fairway. We've got a fair bit of room here, but we're bang down the middle of it, and already, sort of, what are we in now? Three, four shots in. My confidence with, with this thing is increasing. Performance seems really, really good. I'm not bothered right now. We could go to Trackman and we could sort of see how this is doing in terms of overall yardage. Would that make me feel better or worse about this driver if it was longer or shorter? I'll be honest with you, it wouldn't make a blind bit of difference. The confidence I'm getting right now from this club is the fact that that ball's gone 220, 230, 240, who cares? It's somewhere in that region, but more importantly, it's down the middle of the fairway. Right, one more with this ball flight. Well, that was the sixth hole here at Pooler and uh, rarely do I stay on one tee position and just hit driver endlessly and complete a review. But effectively, this last shot you're about to see me hit in that same minus two setting, so 8.5 degrees loft, is the last one you're gonna see on this video. And yet, it found the center of the fairway. So for me, the interesting thing was that, um, I did question whether it was draw bias because if I'm honest with you, I could not get that ball moving from left to right, which is my normal shot shape. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I'll take straight any day of the week. Was it a good swing day for me? I've no idea. But what I will say is the Strixon driver, the ZX5, performed really, really well. I don't know what forgiveness means. Like I said, it's hard to judge. I think you need Trackman to see hitting in and around high toe, low heel, and start to see in the drop-offs in terms of uh, performance to really quantify forgiveness. But what I've seen out on the fairway was that the ball launched high. Even in an 8.5 degree setting, it still launched the ball high. I swung within myself, easy enough, in control. Sound and feel was more than good enough i love the look of this thing and then don't forget the bonuses you're a hundred quid better off in your pocket than some of the top end competitors i just think that i i reviewed the strixon zx5 and zx4 irons which again pretty much hard to pick fault with this is the first um well driver that i've hit for quite some time from strixon and i've got to say really really impressed as you can probably tell 
really good. I'll maybe do a second video on this and we'll compare it to, I mentioned about distance and carry, maybe I'll stick it up against some of them big boys, get it on track man and see what it's doing in terms of overall performance. But for me, that's a really good driver for a lot of golfers, trust me. Right, that's it. We're getting near in the end of the day here at Pula Resort over in Mallorca. The temperature's dropped, the sun is starting to go down. You know what that means? It's time for a beer and I'll see you all tomorrow night.